We're off on more exploration today here in Chiapas and the bad news about kind of everywhere we're traveling in, in Chiapas is that there's opening hours and places are usually closed when I want to be taking pictures, sunrise and sunset. The good news is when you go into places like Canyon Sumendero here in Chiapas, they give you fancy wristbands. How fun is that? So we're at Canyon Sumidero all day today and uh, Steve had this idea that he wanted to go up to the viewpoints and check them out in order of impressiveness. So we're starting at the bottom and working our way up. It's 16 kilometers worth of road. It's five viewpoints and I think it's what 30 kilometers worth of canyon or so and it looks like it's going to be absolutely impressive. It's really blue sky. It's kind of hazy but this is really cool. It looks gorgeous Steve with another <laughs> terrible pun I'm just gonna cut that out of the edit Steve that was horrible basically everywhere we've gone on this trip backpacker Steve has been chucking out fun facts about every location because he does a lot of travel guides on his stuff and I don't do travel guides so it's been kind of fun getting the fun facts so fun fact about this canyon it's exactly the same age as the Grand Canyon they share a birthday and another fun fact about this canyon it's deep Woo! Viewpoint number three, which according to Steve is going to be the best of the best viewpoints. Woo! I just tried to fly a la drone and it's giving me issues. The drone has some sort of gimbal problem that I can't figure out. I don't know if it took like maybe a bump when it was when we were driving or something like that. I didn't have like the, the mount attached to it and those gimbals are pretty fragile, but it kind of sucks. I've only had the drone for like two weeks and it's already giving me problems. The good news is though, Mike's here and Mike also have a, has a Mavic. So getting some drone footage from Mike from this canyon today, um, because this is exactly the type of place you really need a drone to appreciate from a photography standpoint. From here, it looks amazing, but it's just so hard to capture on like a regular video camera. The drone gets way up there and gives you perspective and really cool views. So um, drone footage coming up, but not from my drone, from Mike's. As the team driver, I totally just messed up. We had this idea to go from one to five to a climax here at the canyon. And I got distracted by Jody on the way up. So it's Jody's fault, not my fault. I got distracted by Jody on the way up here, missed viewpoint four. And we're now at viewpoint five. Let's check it out. We've seen the canyon from above and now it's time to see it from the water. We're gonna jump on a boat here at this town. I'm not sure what it's called, just outside of Tuxla. That's really beautiful actually. And jump on a boat and cruise the canyon. It's supposed to be like a three hour journey and it should be a lot of fun.
on the water on a hot day, just the wind blowing through your lack of hair. Love it. Massive crocodile in there. Absolutely massive. Absolutely. You wanna go away? So Mike just finished filming, I think, got some epic shots. The hardest thing, the, the hard, like the most advanced droning is off a boat because your home point moves, the boat moves, you can never stop moving, so you have to catch it, just metal around, it's always super sketchy, but it always looks super, super nice. Jody was posing up on the front of the boat, scared? The most advanced modeling is on a boat. You have water, the boat's rocking from side to side, there are crocodiles and vultures everywhere, but that's how you get an epic shot. They're gonna do whatever they want and, and assert their own will and not worry about how it's being understood or whatever. Yet the wonderful thing about that is that it speaks to people. We're at the deepest part of the canyon now. The guide just told us that it's 100 meters deep here. And at the top of the canyon, way up there, it's 1,000 meters high. And a crazy thing, the indigenous people, when they were here before and the Spanish people came, instead of becoming slaves to the Spanish, they decided to jump. A lot of the indigenous people jumped to their deaths at this exact location to save themselves from slavery. Absolutely crazy. That was a lot of fun. That was actually the perfect way to spend an afternoon. I was actually kind of uh, maybe a little bit apathetic about the boat ride beforehand. And I'm super stoked we did that because it was just so, so much fun. Now, before I end today, I kind of maybe want to just do like a quick sit down and chat about a couple things back at the hotel. Pasito, pasito, suave, suavecito. No vamos pagando poquito, poquito. Despacito. So that's it for uh, the road trip. That's it for the Chiapas vlogs. It was so, so much fun here. So much fun. And I kind of just want to end this video talking about two things. The first being something that you guys asked me so much about on social media, and that's safety in Mexico. And I'll say that throughout my road trip and throughout my time in Mexico City, there wasn't a single moment that I ever felt anything even remotely unsafe. I felt totally safe the whole time. And yes, there's so much bad press about Mexico. And a lot of that has to do with the narcos and the drug trafficking and stuff like that. And I feel like the vast majority of the crime that you hear about in this country is drug related. So if you're a tourist or a visitor or not engaging in drug trafficking, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna be totally safe. That being said, there are precautions you do need to take. Like for example, we didn't drive at night on the rural roads. We didn't drive past like 8 p.m. on any of the rural roads. And so we did take precautions. But that being said, we didn't feel anything except for welcomed. I was shocked at how welcoming people were and how friendly people were. When we'd go into restaurants, people would say hi and, and they'd wish us like a good meal. And it wasn't just wait staff or people working there, there were other patrons. When we walked into the pulqueria in Mexico City, when we walked into restaurants in Chiapas, as soon as we walked in, everybody looked at us and they're like, ah, oh, foreigners. 
and they all wanted to make us feel welcome and they were definitely, definitely welcoming. So I felt nothing but welcomed in Mexico and I totally can recommend to you guys to come and visit, especially in Chiapas, because it's been unreal. The second thing I want to talk about is about the creators. And this trip has reminded me that I need to spend more time with other creators. And not only is it nice to be hanging out with people that have kind of like similar lifestyles as you, but because I learn a lot. And seeing everybody work and how they process their creations in video was really important to me and I really learned a lot. <laughs> Mike Corey, Kick the Grind, who is linked to in the description of this video, is a really, really good videographer. He's a really great filmmaker, and every shot he takes has this purpose. Mike's kind of a master of transitions. If you watch his videos, every single shot leads to another shot in a very clever way. And watching Mike work and watching his brain process things was exciting for me. It was really interesting for me. There wasn't a single video shot he took that he didn't have a purpose to. That he wasn't thinking about the start and the end and the middle. And I find myself sometimes just shooting without a purpose. And part of that is because I vlog rather than film make. But it was really exciting for me to see and it was really interesting for me to see. So totally go and check out Mike's videos. And Steve. I think Steve's personality doesn't really show through on his videos, but Steve does really, really, really good travel guides of places around the world, Patagonia, Iran, here in Mexico, Iceland, and he does very, very informative videos that are just full of the exact information you want to find if you're traveling to a destination. But what you guys don't see on his videos is that the dude's hilarious. Steve's so funny and he's so good to be around and it's so nice to have people like Steve on a road trip that can keep things light and fun. So go check out Steve's videos, especially if you're planning on traveling to one of the places he, do he did. If you're planning on coming to Mexico, wait a little while until his videos are up. Check out the information he posted because it's absolute gold. And finally, Jody. Watching Jody evolve over the past, like, I guess month since she started vlogging has been incredible. Jody was always like very brave. It took me like years to build up the courage to like vlog in public. Jody does it right away. From day one, she just busts out the camera and she vlogs anywhere, anytime, doesn't care who's around and she's been really, really good at that. But over the past month, watching her evolve and become more and more comfortable on camera and becoming more and more herself on camera has been really impressive. Because if you've ever started filmmaking, the hardest thing to do is to sound like yourself on video or to sound normal on video. At first, when you start doing video, you always sound like you're TV presenting. And the advice I always give to new filmmakers is to talk to camera like you're talking to uh, a friend, like you're talking to your best friend, like your camera is your best friend. And for me, it took a year, at least a year until I felt like that. And a lot of my growth happened because I was in Africa and I was all alone for two years basically. And my only friend was my camera, was my GoPro Hero 1. And so I became really, really comfortable talking to the camera because it did become my friend. It did become my therapist on that trip. And watching Jody get more and more comfortable in front of the camera has been so impressive. So be sure to also go and check out Jody's channel. Lots of cool travel stuff and then some information on what life is like as a digital nomad and stuff like that. So all three of our creators are in the description of this video below. And I guess that's it. It's been amazing in Chiapas, and it's one of these places that I cannot believe more people don't visit because it's just unbelievable. And I already am planning a trip back to chase more waterfalls and more nature and explore a little bit more. So that's it from Chiapas. I'm off to a vacation in Puerto Escondido for a bit and then Oaxaca for a couple days and then it's off to the US Southwest where I'm so excited to return because I'm not sure there's anywhere in the world that has more impressive landscapes than the US Southwest, and yes, I'm including Iceland in that. So, stoked for that stuff, stoked for some landscape photography, travel photography, and more exploration coming up on the channel, and I hope to see you guys around. Peace.